you know, in regards to diversity, diversity is key too. We're trying to, you know, represent the heart and soul of Austin. Mm -hmm. um, Cesar and Alex Limon are from Guadalajara. Uh, we're the only minority-owned brewery in the city, okay. um, so we try to make sure that that's represented in everything we do as well. We've had to deal with permitting issues through the city. Uh, we've gotten numerous, you know, kind of uh, tickets from the city oh. for, for, <laughs> yeah. vari for various things, and um, you know, we fought back. This is one more, please. Welcome to Otra Por Favor. Otra Por Favor. We are joined by our regular cast and a very, very special guest. My name is Jorge Martinez, and I'm joined by my cast. Go ahead and introduce yourselves, guys. Yeah, I'm here, David. How are you guys? Hey, what's up, man? Good, good. And this is Richie. Uh, thank you guys for having us here. Um, as you guys can see, we're in a different place, uh, and it's a, a place that we're, we're very fond of, and we appreciate everything they do. Um, they're open to always, uh, you know, have a spot for everyone in the community here. Uh, we're a Hop Squad, and with us is Craig Finley. Did I say last name right? Uh, Teddy. Teddy. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I confused myself for a second. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I, I always tell people, man, I can always do five good ones, but I can always do one one wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. <laughs> so, but yeah, Greg, you know, thank you for having us here. Uh, of course, yeah. We welcome. really appreciate it and appreciate being here. Great. Yeah, we appreciate your time. And I and I know that time on a Sunday night for, for, a, for a father is very precious. So we're going to go straight into it, man. If you could tell us a little bit about yourself and about the the origins of, of the Hop Squad family here. Uh, yeah, my, my name's Greg. I'm the uh, general manager here at Hop Squad. I've been here uh, since we opened our doors, which was about uh, uh, two years ago. Actually, next weekend on the 27th, we're celebrating our two year anniversary. Wow. Congratulations, man. That's very special. Nice, two nice, years. Nice. Yeah. So it's been, uh, you know, it seems like 10, but it's been uh, it's been a you know long, funky adventure. Um, <laughs> you know, we've had the support of the community. Um, obviously, Austin FC being right nearby has helped us out. For sure. Um, but yeah, we're looking forward to having a good party next weekend. Um, but um, I've been here, like I said, since we opened the doors here. Um, I'm friends with the owners, Alex and Cesar Limon. Um, they are, um, you know, very passionate about beer, um, and they, you know, put this project together, Hop Squad Brewing, I want to say probably 2014, 2015 is when the, you know, the seeds were planted to start a, start a brewery. Um, and I just kind of hopped on board to help them, uh, run the show. Uh, initially I was working, um, you know, in tech, uh, and doing that full time and helping them out part time. Uh, but I got laid off, uh, from my tech job, uh, as a result of the pandemic. Wow. Um, so when that happened, um, it was just easy to flip the switch. Cesar and Alex kind of was like, hey, you work for us now full time. So what, I wouldn't have it any other way. What a great story, man. Yeah. That's it. And, and I know that it must have presented its own challenges with uh, with the pandemic and the way you transition into into managing this brewery and, and it, especially how it opened in the, pretty much at the beginning of the pandemic. Am I correct? Uh, yeah, pretty much. We had our soft opening uh, at the end of December 2019. Uh, and then we did our grand opening after we kind of got our sea legs, got staff trained up and everything. Uh, we had our grand opening uh, February 29th, uh, 2020. And then obviously we had a couple of weeks and then the pandemic was right in the middle of March 2020. That's when uh, that's when the uh, city of Boston shut everything down and we had to close the doors and kind of figure out how to uh, how to survive uh, through that. Wow. That's, that's insane, man. Um, it's it's probably it was tough for everybody uh, during the pandemic, and I'm guessing you know Hopsod wasn't a, an ex exception. Um, tell us a little bit more. So you said you were a technician before, and now uh, did you have any any experience in the brewery uh, community, and anything like that? Uh, so I actually uh, there's a there's a bus back there. Uh, you might have noticed that that white uh, bus. It says Pat City Brew Tours. That's mine. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, I run a brewery tour business as well. Cool. Um, and that's actually how I came to meet Cesar and Alex. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and so I had experience doing brewery tours before. Um, and, you know, all through college, I made my way through college working at bars and restaurants, all that. So um, it was always something I was familiar with uh, before coming on here full time. 
Cool, Greg. Yeah, and uh, one thing that, that like, like personally, uh, I my office is about a block away, so I would always drive around here, and I was like, man, when is this place gonna open? Like, it looks cool, <laughs> and like, when is you guys open? You guys open like, you know, right, right around when six. I remember there was a other like a omakase place here yeah, in the past when uh, well, Suge Hotel. and we came here. The first time here was actually with with uh, I think his name was Mike the the. Yeah, the, the, chef. Sushi, the chef and uh like i enjoyed you know the atmosphere i enjoyed like everything i enjoyed how you know it, it was like it felt like you had a place where it, you, you you know you can move around and it wasn't like super crowded and of course it got crowded and that's always a good thing and but but after that like i just like i started looking at like say your 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 beers and i started seeing that you guys would do regular brews that stay consistently but you also have seasonal brews um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So kind of the, the, the mantra behind Hop Squad that Cesar and Alex have uh, really instilled is anything goes. Okay. Um, they really don't kind of limit um, the style of beers that we make here. Um, so that's why you're always going to see these kind of interesting, um, you know, experimental beers, uh, seasonals especially. Uh, but, you know, we have our standards, the Zapatista Mexican Lager, the uh, Architetto Ruffini Italian Pilsner, Cowboy Vivo Brown Ale, uh, Lord Zanate IPA. These are all ones that we're going to have all the time. Mm -hmm. they're, they're fan favorites or crowd favorites. Um, but we also, you know, we'll get out there and do kind of weird stuff. Um, we do a watermelon mint summer ale Ooh. that we'll be Ooh, doing here. Uh, yeah, we'll be doing that here pretty soon uh, as up. the weather starts to get a little <laughs> yeah. bit warmer. Yes. Uh, we do a cucumber basil okay. uh, wheat beer. Uh, we've done a, um, a whole cocktail series where we kind of make these... Uh, cocktail inspired beers so uh, a good example of one of these we did like a, a jamaican rum cocktail inspired beer using a yeast that kind of uh, really gave this beer kind of those same notes you get from like a rum cocktail um, and then we also went out to the hill country to some distilleries around the hill country mm -hmm. and uh, we uh, worked with them and did a whole series of um, beers using the whiskey soaked chips that they use in the distilling process so we made a whole uh, series of beers uh, with uh, keeping that uh, in mind so uh, we really don't have any barrier to what we want to do it's just kind of whatever we all just sit back there in the big desk in the back it's like well what do we want to do next you know? <laughs> and so that's like, awesome what's what's not getting represented in austin you know what styles have we not seen everywhere you know it's it's easy to go find good pilsners good lagers good ipas uh, they're all over the place but you know it's not everywhere you see a jamaican rum cocktail inspired beer so right. those are the kind of things we're kind of uh, trying to keep in mind cool and, and from the beers, when you guys, you know, come up and testing and sampling, how many beers do you guys, like, how many, like, for, for a beer to release, how many samples do you guys taste? Um, well, you don't really get to sample the beer. Uh, you know, you just got to make it and hope mm -hmm. it kind of came out that okay. well. Um, so we're a, a little bit more about the brewery. We're a 15-barrel system, so we can make 15 barrels at one time. Uh, so that's relatively small in, in terms in, in regards to, you know, other breweries, you know, in, in the city. We're still a very, very small production brewery. Um, so it's a, there's both a benefit and a curse to that. Uh, the curse being, you know, it's small. So uh, once you're out of a beer, you've kind of, you know, got to brew it again. Mm -hmm. um, but the benefit of it is we get the chance to experiment in all those different ways. And most of the experiments you guys do and once you guys release it, like, it's always a hit. Like, but they're obviously, like, uh, limited edition and you know like or in, sometimes you guys are out and, which is good yeah it's quite literally like when it's gone it might be gone forever uh, mm -hmm. some of them you know we, there's swings and misses some of them don't take off as well as we like it's like all right well that one didn't work out so yeah. we'll keep that in mind we'll do do something else next time Go, going back to the mantra you described of anything goes how do you think that it, it informs the identity of hop squad uh, um, you know just because that's how we want to do it. Um, we don't have any kind of set rules by how we operate. Um, we had to fly by the seat of our pants through the pandemic and you know we're still pretty much flying by the seat of our pants with this huge stadium they built right down the road. So, <laughs> right, right. Um, we didn't know, like we didn't pick this place with that, knowing that that would be there. That place really? was built, you know, we were watching it get built as mm -hmm. we were, you know, sitting here in the back, uh, you know, 
playing poker through the days yeah. of the pandemic when we couldn't do anything else, you know? Um, and we were watching the, the stands go up. We were watching the, uh, the roof go up. And <laughs> so, um, you know, and kind of finding our way through those game days, you know, when you open a brewery, you don't anticipate, especially such a small one, you don't anticipate uh, thousands of people coming through at any time, yeah. uh, let alone, you know, on those game days. So. Uh, that anything goes mantra just is like we got to figure it out just as much as everybody else does it might i mean i'm always thrilled to hear people say that oh you guys really look like you've got a grasp on things no no we don't we don't know <laughs> really yeah, every, it's just every a day <laughs> every day is just we're you know our heads on fire you know we're yeah. just running around back yeah. there trying to survive trying to get all those beers uh served as fast as we can on the game days to make sure right. that uh you know the line is going you know, down the, out the bar, around the pony yeah, wall, out the crazy. front, past the bathrooms, out mm -hmm. the front door. The atmosphere here. And we're just trying to move crazy. that line, get yeah. those beers served yeah. as best we can. Yeah. It's always best to find that friend ahead of the line and say, hey, I, I got <laughs> you. Me, I got you this round. Just, yeah. you know, like the key is to come here enough and become a kind of a VIP where the staff Ooh, knows you. And there you go. So the secret, I mean, I should say something. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's okay, man. Anything, <laughs> anything goes. It's a hot tip. It's a hot tip. Anything goes. They kind of find their way to the other side of the bar and just kind of give us a look. So, oh, we know you. All right, we'll get you. That's it. That's the secret. Hey, you lift your bag right secret. here. Bag is the, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. the, how do you call it? The keyword for beer. <laughs> but um, one thing that like you said, like like community, uh, the build, the stadium was built, at, you know, and you guys were already here and how you guys have been connecting with not just the soccer part, not just Los Verdes, La Murga, but you guys are also connecting with other, you know, like a diverse crowd. Like say, you guys have yoga with goats here and you guys also do like candle making, like right before here, there was a candle making class. Um, like how does all of that get started? And, and like, did they reach out to you guys? Like, hey, you want to do it? Or just people that you already know? Well, yeah, a lot, a lot of people reach out to us now. Um, now they kind of realize, I mean, we've done a good job, I think, in instilling the pregame environment here, right? People, for sure, for they sure. kind of, uh, it's like the, the day is go pregame at Hop Squad or our neighbor's circle right next door here. And then, you know, take some beers to go, walk down to the stadium, go to the game, have a good time, then come back, right? Mm -hmm. And so now the word's getting out. It's like, oh, no, everybody kind of wants a piece of the pie, right? So um, a lot of folks are reaching out to us. So it's giving us the benefit of being kind of picky and choosy. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're like, well, you know, we don't necessarily want, you know, comedy. Everybody does comedy. Right. You know, everybody does trivia, you know, so we want to have those kind of more fun events and you know in regards to diversity diversity is key too we're trying to you know represent the heart and soul of austin mm -hmm. um, cesar and Adam are from guadalajara uh, we're the only minority owned brewery in the city okay um, so we try to make sure that that's represented in everything we do as well yeah it's wonderful man i love that i love the story not 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 now that you said uh that about the the, the people coming in here and all that uh, about the austin fc um I'm pretty sure the parking space, um, it's a little bit tough to like, kind of like monitor all that traffic, right? Yeah, the parking's Thunderdome out there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I stopped trying long ago. That's out of your hands. Yeah, yeah. That's, out of my hands. that's That's above, that's just, above us. I just hope that people are coming in and supporting us and not right? just using it as a parking spot to get, uh, get down the road. I also just worry that the staff can park here, you know? Right. Yeah, Make yeah, sure the staff definitely. can get parking spots so we can actually open it. Right. It's actually nice though, our neighbors across the street at Culver's, uh, super great owner, mm -hmm. uh, He's, he's helped us out a lot. He's given us some parking spots across no, the street good. there for our staff. Oh, so nice. So that's, they can that's park great. across the street and then just run over here and not have to worry about it. Can, can you talk to me a little bit more of how the different businesses and communities here have uh, assisted themselves in a way or tried to, you know, try to create an environment where everyone can get a piece of that pie? Because, you know, even what you're saying with the owners at Culver's, I had no idea. But, I mean, it seems like this community in particular uh, is working together and and sees the opportunity as not something that they can just grab onto themselves, but that can be shared with other businesses. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, everybody in this neighborhood had to make adjustments because of that stadium. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had to deal with permitting mm -hmm. issues through the city. Uh, we've gotten numerous, you know, kind of uh, tickets <laughs> from the city oh. for, for, <laughs> yeah. vari for various things. And, um, you know, we fought back, you know, it's, yeah. Yeah. it's hard for, you know, we're trying to survive as a business, A, uh, but it's also tough when the city is saying, oh no, you got to go through this whole permitting process to be able to do that. It's like, we can't prevent 
He's like, you want us to tell people they can't come here? We didn't ask for the stadium to get built there. Mm -hmm. It got built there. We need to adjust for that. <laughs> right. um, and we, we're hoping that the city is making some moves to, you know, help us in that. You know, an example is, uh, you know, we, we got a ticket for a tent being too close to the building or something like that. What? You yeah. know, like these, these kind of like weird, like, yes, they're technically things you got to get permitted and fine for, but like we tried to go through their processes and everything would just get delayed and then rejected, delayed, rejected. So, oh man, you don't got to tell me, you yeah. don't got to tell me more about that. <laughs> I, I work in construction uh, and uh, just getting right away permits and you got to do it in that very particular yeah, way. Like, Otherwise, it's rejected. So the, and the guy, <laughs> I feel the guys, your pain. <laughs> the guy's here at, you know, eight in the morning. If nobody's here, he waits for one minute and then he leaves. Yeah, he and, leaves. Yeah. And you'll get an email in, the, in a rejected. few. Yeah, yeah, rejected. Yeah, so, rejected. Like, we're making every good faith effort to do everything that the city wants us to do. But, you know, it's it's kind of a give and take. Everybody's got to. That's everybody's got to. Insane. You know, That's a message to the city of Austin. You got, you got to help your businesses out, man. Come yeah, on. For, this, is, this is really what makes the city special right here. This type of environment. Exactly. We. I mean, we're fostering the culture and we're you know promoting something that they wanted you know we promote Austin FC we yes. we have the games here we show the games we have the pre-games uh, you know we're fostering them just as much as you know we would like them to foster us back so mm -hmm. uh, but in regards to your original question of uh, you know the other businesses um, you know we just want to make sure that we're uh, using our you know fame and our um, kind of leverage to elevate those who need it as well so mm -hmm. when we bring in those other businesses and if somebody reaches out like hey we want to be involved uh, we really put them through a vetting process we want to be like well what is it you do uh, how are you giving back to the community because uh, everybody just you know what they want the they want the eyeballs they want the you know the, the attention mm -hmm. but like what are you doing with that so we, we go through a very careful vetting process of everybody that kind of wants that uh, you know, wants the, to be involved with us on those game days. And, um, you know, we've got some cool, exciting stuff lined up for, uh, you know, this, this next season. Nice. Right on. That's yeah. good. Um, one more question that I have is, um, I noticed that, like the community of breweries in this area, it's about a one mile radius and there's about eight breweries. And you guys seem to show support to each other. Um, and then for me, that that's very, I, I appreciate that because I rarely hear any animosity between breweries. Um, like, like say, I think, I, I can't remember the exact uh, name of, of a particular event that was going on, but there was like, you buy a wristband, you go to one brewery, then you go to the other one. But that event was going on when Hop Squad wasn't open, so but people can come and get a can. Um, uh, is, is there like say in the future are you guys gonna continue to you know to work with the other breweries to support each other in that aspect yeah of course that that mentality is not unique just to this zip code here where mm. there's a there's a seven breweries and then there's a cidery mm. so we have ourselves circle brewing next door austin beer works down the road mm -hmm. uh fourth tap fairweather the i think i might have said that already the cidery um Celis, mm -hmm. um and adelberts yep. and so we're all constantly in communication in fact we, we have our own kind of like uh, we call it the north austin brewery slack channel nice where we all communicate with one another especially on like these game days you yeah, know sure um, kind of looking at like hey there's a rowdy group that just left ours make sure they're not going to use <laughs> or something hey, like that cool. hey, that's they didn't let us in the, <laughs> at the other place right? yeah <laughs> but you know at the end of the day all of the the craft breweries around here and in austin specifically everyone's working towards that greater good you know the mm -hmm. um the, you know, if you want to pit us all against an enemy, the real enemy is like those companies like InBev and, uh, you know, Anheuser-Busch and mm -hmm. uh, these big distributors that come in and try to, you know, buy out. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we have a lot of respect for those big breweries that, you know, do their thing in self-distribution. Circle Next Door does a killer job. They self-distribute. Austin Beer Works, they, like, have strong uh, moral obligations against that. Mm -hmm. and, we, and we share that as well. So uh, it's fantastic. You know, like, when we were opening up, um, you know, we are like at the end of the day, we're a competing business, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, us being here takes business away from them, but it, they don't think of like they, they offered nothing but help. What can we do to help you guys? Right. Um, they and we like everyone in the brewing scene in Austin celebrates another brewery mm -hmm. because everyone's so excited to, you know, say, see what that new brewery will bring to mm -hmm. the table. Um, so, yeah, there's a huge camaraderie. I mean, with us, especially in the zip code, because we all have a you know, a similar uh, situation with the stadium being mm -hmm. nearby. Um, but uh, that's not unique to the zip code. That's something you're going to see in the entire city with mm -hmm. uh, all the breweries across. We're constantly in communication. Um, 
All of them are a part of the Texas Craft Brewers Guild, which mm -hmm. is a greater organization that works for the betterment of uh, craft brewing in the state of Texas. So we're all involved in that. Mm -hmm. um, there was just a meeting, um, a big statewide meeting last week at Livo um, that we have participated in. Okay. Everyone shares ideas, shares stories, shares information, everything like that. So. Um, we just kind of, it, it just looks from our from our side that it's a little bit more magnified because of the stadium. But uh, yeah, we work together best we can. Nice. And which Slack is more like busier? The Los Verdes Slack or the Brewery Slack? Oh yeah, Los Verdes. Can you share? Pretty dead, you know? Pretty. Just, uh, can you share a little bit about the, uh, like whenever you went to the stadium and everybody from Los Verdes, or you joined Los Verdes, and that's saw, this saw your name, but Craig Hop Squad. Oh, and how yeah. everybody I hit mean, you up. <laughs> so I, I initially had joined Los Verdes like way when they uh, had broken off from Anthem and uh, they, they came here and they were like, hey, like we're a new supporters group. Um, you know, we want to be involved in hockey. They're like, that's great. Yeah, like what we want to brew a beer. That's where the Zapatista was born, mm -hmm. the Mexican lager um, that uh, was brewed in collaboration with Los Verdes originally. Um, and so I joined the Slack and it was, I just put Hop Squad Greg in there just because that's, <laughs> it was just like a different, so I wanted people to know that they're, like, you know, I could, I could speak to what they needed from, from Hop Squad and then I just kind of left it because now it's everybody calls me. Nice. <laughs> Hop Squad Greg, yeah, put right. some respect on that name, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> Man, it, it's, that's awesome. I know, I know, like we, we always like, we, we appreciate like everything that this, you know, this brewery has done and other breweries as well. For sure. Like every time we want to do something, you know, we did a photo shoot at a Fort Tap and they, they allowed it. So it's great. And man, I really appreciate Craig. Like I appreciate you. I appreciate your business, your team. You guys are always welcoming to everyone. And I'm pretty sure the community thanks you guys. Um, the supporter groups thank, thank you guys as well. And if, if there's anything you guys need from us, I don't know how much help it could be. Like, just let us know and we can do it, you know? Yeah, I appreciate it. Like, that. say, Bye. Some way, someone leaves, like, a, a mess or doesn't clean up, we can we'll come in and yeah. help you guys clean up. No, for it's, sure. It's been great. Like, at Los Verdes especially, they always reach out to me after um, every, um, like, home game or every Los Verdes sponsored event here. Like, especially during those um, that those away games the, mm -hmm. at the beginning of the season last year where there was eight straight away games. Like, they were very... Um, you know, at the end of the night, everyone was cleaning up, taking out trashes over to the dumpster. So, you know, what do you need? What do you need? And when we do have some situations, they're always really quick to get to the bottom of it and figure out what happened and, you know, help us make sure that that doesn't go down again. That's good. That's good. And, uh, yeah, you guys have any more questions um, for Greg? Or do you have any questions for us, Greg? No, no, no. I'm, a, I'm, just, I'm just here to answer. <laughs> yeah. I just, nice. I just want to thank you personally uh, for, like, like Richie said, for letting us um, have this moment and, and you taking the time of uh, answering some questions that we had. And uh, thank you, man. We appreciate the business. We appreciate you. Yeah, of and, course. Uh, yeah, anything you guys need from me? Recording on the game day. Sorry, we couldn't make that uh, home opener work out. But oh, that's okay. You know, we'll, we'll do another. We'll do another home game. Yeah, sure. yeah, we're, we're excited. <laughs> Thanks for giving us this opportunity to to record at, at, at this wonderful brewery and. For those of you who haven't been to Hop Squad, I Come on. highly recommend it. It's, yep. it's a beautiful space. It's got indoor, outdoor. It's close to the stadium, and it's got great beers that I can attest to. Have delicious. <laughs> so thanks, yeah. Greg. Appreciate cool. it, man. Yeah, thanks, guys. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. All right, guys. So um, we're in the second part of Episodio 37. Um, we're going to jump in from talking about Hop Squad with Greg and touch the subject that we love to talk about the most, which is football. Que viva el fútbol. Que viva y que viva y que siga viviendo. Yes, sir. Uh, I know we're, you know, we're about to start the, the new season on Saturday, February 26th. Yes, sir. Ga uh, season opener against uh, Cincinnati FC. Yeah, man. Q2 Stadium. Yeah. And what do you guys how do you guys feel uh i know we we keep talking about this question but i think it's always uh gonna be a question how do you feel what do you think now after the preseason after the like after having four friendly games what are your thoughts regards to a, a, a specific player the system where josh wolf is going um, who do you guys think is you know you can tell they did their work in the preseason and who do you think like really, really needs to do some more work, uh, like especially physically? Yeah, I mean, I want to be honest. I I only watched the Atlas game because I was there at the stadium. Mm -hmm. um, the other the Houston one, I kind of saw a little bit of it. I saw the golf mostly, 
Uh, but the, the game yesterday against, uh, who was it? Against Chicago. Chicago. Chicago Fire. Chicago Fire. Mm -hmm. I, I, I missed it. So, but from what I saw uh, on on the friendly against Atlas, um, I feel like the 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 eleven started uh, players starting mm -hmm. players. Um, it was it was a little tough to like decide who made an impression for me just mm -hmm. because they all were were. Uh, I, I I feel like most of them I hadn't seen them play before. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, there were a few. We, we, we even had a, a new goalie. I mean, which it was crazy. Um, mm -hmm. I thought Stewart was gonna be uh, starting that game, but um, they gave Tarbo. Yeah. La oportunidad there. Yeah. So they gave him the opportunity, and uh, I feel like he did pretty well. Um, as far as like I said, player, I, I feel like what I saw in 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 in, in context with uh, with mm -hmm. who's who's in uh, who's in shape, who's. Uh, Who's been doing their stuff uh, before the preseason? It's uh, Romagna. I felt like he was. He looked a little bit heavy to me. He looked tired right, right at the beginning of the of the uh, of the game, uh -huh. which uh, is not something that we really want to watch. You know, we want somebody that is trying, that is going. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he got hurt, but uh, uh, one uh, one play he looked like he was uh, hurt. Uh -huh. I thought he was gonna get sub, but um, suddenly he came back, and then I was like, "Well, something something is going on with him," and that's why he's looking like that. But That was uh, the only play that I saw that it needed a little bit more. It needed to be a little bit more in shape, I think. Mm -hmm. Romagna, that's well. It's it's hard because he he's a big guy, he a big a, boy. He's a big boy, a big boy, big yeah. boy you know. And uh, let me just start it right here. Sorry, guys. Um, he's a big boy, and like there's there's one thing is some for someone like him. Like we were talking about, like the off season, you know. Yeah. Who, from the players that we have, who do you guys feel like? I don't know if he really, really like kept in shape, because right. I mean, cramping on on like beginning of the second half, knowing that you're, you know, you have that big of a body, like it's. Did you take care of yourself in the second half? Like, did you actually look up to you know like? doing some more training because you already know the like MLS is very physical it's quick for for hit for like for someone like him yeah and for me is did um did he actually continue with training because if if say here here's another thing is like we we yes we are having like Kip Keller coming in and then uh Gabriel came in But for someone like like Romagna that could be a potential starter and him having those physical issues, that, that shows like what do you do on your off time, like especially in the in the off season. Yeah, I'd rather I'd rather have these problems early on in the preseason than in the actual season. Right. And and, and talking about the defensive line, the, the, you, we, we've added uh, Ruben Gabrielson. Mm -hmm. and, and Kip Keller. Keller yeah. um, right. I can't speak much about Gabrielson. He's, I think he only played a little, bit, a few minutes yeah. against Chicago Fire. But mm -hmm. everything that I've seen about Kip Keller has been very, very uh, uh, amazing. Like mm -hmm. I, I did not expect him to look as uh, physically fit, as solid, and as seguro atrás. He was mm -hmm. completely sure of himself. Something that I looked at him and I said, "This guy, I feel safe with in the back." Mm -hmm. Whereas the opposite side of the coin, Romagna. Mm -hmm. It was somebody that every time, especially in that game against Atlas, yeah. we were sitting on the south end yeah. and we saw him really close. We saw how his movements look slow, mm -hmm. a little bit clumsy, yes. a little bit uh, just trying to play it safe out the back. But sometimes looked like the, the Atlas player who also wasn't a titular, you know, he was, you know, probably a, 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 a team B or C yeah. was making him look really slow. Mm -hmm. So that, that, that kind of uh, makes me a little bit scared. But who knows? We can only speculate, right? Whether he didn't do fitness right, or maybe he just didn't prepare the day before. He wasn't hydrated right. He didn't eat the right things. All those little right. things that go into the game yeah. that they can give you a cramp or lead to issues like like we're seeing. And then mm -hmm. uh, I'm not too sure about the extent of his uh, injury or how he was feeling. Mm -hmm. But uh, I feel good in knowing that we have Kip Keller. Yeah, we had Gabrielson. 
and Julio Cascante, who has looked a little bit more solid right. this preseason. So maybe it's something that we can deal with now. But in order for us to be great, we need a we need a, a, a healthy, yeah. fit Romagna. Right, right. right. And that was, we were forgetting a point too that uh, these are friendly games mm -hmm. and. Uh, also, these players are not taking this, they're not doing the same intensity as a real game, right. which mm -hmm. which is understandable. They don't want to get hurt. That season the basket start, so they got to take care of themselves. Um, maybe that could be one reason that we saw that Romagna wasn't all there, mm -hmm. um, because I don't know if you guys remember, but last season he was doing pretty good in the bag. Like I felt really mm -hmm. secure with him being there. Um, but the game against, against Atlas, like you said, he looked a little bit short. You know, mm -hmm. we wanted more, but it, I don't know. It may be. Maybe if it was something, uh, something that he was bothering him, maybe some something was hurting him mm -hmm. that uh, we didn't see everything that he can give for the for the team. Mm -hmm. But uh, but he he looked he looked pretty pretty short there for me. Mm -hmm. What about um, let's say when it were like the tactic? How the the I mean you can't really get much from four friendly games. But right. what do you guys think of in how to? The players, I mean, even even the new ones, and the ones that have already been in, in the in the team, how do they feel like they were meshing in the field? Um, because for for me personally, I, I got to see them a little more compact, a, a, a lot more comfortable with each other. They already knew where which player was going to go, and they already knew like the limitations of a player. So, and. Let's say for for uh, Fagundes, he played 20 minutes against Atlas. He he did some some pauses on the left side that allowed players to get to him, and instead of going all the way through like the breakaway and maybe losing the ball, he waited para que los acompañaran, and then from there go in and actually create a dangerous play. I mean, there was a couple ones que le que se llevó a este. Uh, al lateral de Atlas eh, se lo llevó en la mitad de la cancha agarró la pelota and he kept going and then he stopped like quarter of the field and then from there actually switched the pace to where they can continue to build play and you see Drusi coming into him a lot so se that, querían, se querían juntar. Uh -huh, yeah. so yeah and then and that's on the left side but Fagun displays on the on the right side, so it gives a, it gives me a little more uh, a good hope that we have a pretty good wingers, you know. Lo que no sé si se fijaron, pero lo que lo que yo vi en el juego ese fue que el, 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 al al principio no al principio este los jugadores que estaban no eran los jugadores que estamos uh, acostumbrados a ver jugar especialmente empezar un partido ¿no? uh -huh. uh, y el segundo tiempo entran otros jugadores que le dieron una diferente cara al equipo, por ejemplo como, de, como dices Fagundes ¿no? que, que entró y entró con esa dinámica con ese movimiento, con esas ganas uh -huh. de, de hacer algo diferente porque, porque acuérdense, acuérdense que, que Austin sí estaba perdiendo en el, en el primer tiempo uh -huh. y, y cuando entra este jugador, cuando entra Drusi ya le da una diferente dinámica al equipo, le da mu mucho más movimiento, mucho más este sostiene, mu sostiene mucho más el balón y lo conduce mejor uh -huh. que los otros jugadores. Uh -huh. Entonces le dan una mejor una mejor este forma a los otros jugadores para que se muestren, para que se muevan, para que les den opciones. Y, y yo creo que eso eso va a ayudar mucho al equipo. Uh -huh. um, Drusy, I mean he kept being Drusy. Yeah. And as long as he continues to be Drusi and improve, like we're out in a good place. Yeah, yeah. Like when we had in a good uh, place. When we had uh, uh, the Moon Tower guys, uh, I think it was Jeremiah Bentley who said um, he projects him to be a top five player, and hopefully mm -hmm. that's true. Um, our uh, nuestra media cancha, it just looks, it just looks more solid. Yeah. yeah. Knowing that we have the addition of uh, Felipe Martins, he he is looking like everything they described him to be a, mm -hmm. a warrior. Someone that fights for the ball. Same, same, same could be said with uh, Johan Valencia. Mm -hmm. There was a, a play in particular that I remember in the Atlas game in the yes. second half, que recupera un balón cerca de la media luna, and mm -hmm. it looks like he's gonna lose it, right? Mm -hmm. And he's fighting on the floor, mm -hmm. and he wins the ball back in the middle of three Atlas players, yeah. and he manages to pass it out. That's something that uh, perhaps 
last season would have ended up in a in a, in a shot on goal or a mm -hmm. goal against so that to me gives me a little bit of uh of hope a little esperanza for this season you know what i mean mm -hmm. i think our midfield looks solid in the middle and the wingers like i just want to see a game where cecilio and fagundes play on the on, on the opposite bandas because i right. know they can wreak havoc to the to, to uh mm -hmm. to defenses with their speed and their talent and i think it, like say here's soccer like sometimes it's not all about choosing when to switch it up to a different variant you know yeah L for example when you have drusi and uh not drusi cecilio and fagundes, fagundes uh -huh. i mean one place on the right the other place on the left mm -hmm. they can't switch i've seen them switch you know like i've seen cecilio play on the left and he does very well um now cecilio is always in cecilio is better at playing on the left because he can cut in cuts in he likes to do right that. but on the right i feel like he had a little more visibility to make a play especially as he's getting close to the goal to instead of going in like straight to the goal to look back and making a diagonal pass backwards for the player that's coming behind and, and i feel like that's when someone like ring already knows how to step in someone like Drusi would know how to step in. It's those those diagonal plays that instead of crossing it in like we've normally seen, you know, those are very millimetric and very very quick to do. For sure. No cre credit to Josh Wolf and the and the coaching staff. From what I've seen in the preseason, mm -hmm. it's not perfect, but but it's the the, the link up play, las jugadas que hacen, mm -hmm. it, it's a lot better. You know, you, you get you get plays of you know five, eight, ten touches. With a shot, with a right. shot on goal, so it looks like the players are are, are starting to understand and starting to uh, make the movements, and they, the team chemistry has 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 greatly improved. So, I don't know what I don't know what, what your thoughts are on that, David. Como encajado esa táctica de, de Josh Wolf? Alguien bien criticado. Sí, sí. Y no, y, y yo creo que nosotros hemos sido mucho y muchos de lo que hemos criticado al entrenador. <laughs> y, y yo creo que sí se está viendo un poquito la mano de él como el movimiento de pelota de lado a lado, lo cual era muy común. Ahora están uh -huh. tratando de llevársela más por el medio, más conducir la pelota, como te digo. Esos dos medios que tenemos ahorita en, uh -huh. en, en, en el equipo son los que conducen la pelota. El momento que conducen la pelota los, a las bandas es donde les da opción de abrirse uh -huh. y esperar el pase para centrar, lo cual, lo cual yo creo que nos va a dar mucha más opción de meter un gol que tratando de ir de una vez en la banda a centrar, el, a meter la pelota al centro. Entonces... Yo creo que Wolf está conociendo uh, más a su equipo y con los nuevos este, integrantes que le trajeron, yo creo que vamos a ver algo diferente. Yo creo que este, hay que darle, este, ¿cómo se dice? Hay que darle, hay que darle la prueba, hay que ver qué, 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 nos, qué nos enseña. ¿no? Uh -huh. Acordémonos, como dijimos antes, que estos son partidos... Preseason, uh, this yeah, is preseason. Uh, these, these are we're, friendlies, you know. We're not getting excited, right, 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 right. So, but we're excited. Uh, <laughs> we, we, <laughs> Saturday is when we have to es, see something. Es la yeah. Yeah, sí. so. what, what, what are your thoughts on Baby Wolf? Any thoughts? Man, he <laughs> either, I don't know what he was, he's been eating, but he looks solid a for 17. Grass fed beef. Possibly, <laughs> a you know. A1, baby. A $20 a pound <laughs> steak ribeye or, or New York strip. Man, but baby wolf, he's got quads. Man, man. He's, he, he's looking. He looked like a completely different player. He got a haircut <laughs> and everything, dude. <laughs> I, I think, I think wolf is gonna, you know, if if he, he's doing what he needs to do, which is be a soccer player, he's taking advantage of the opportunity that his dad is there. I mean, but he's earned. He's earning that spot. I'm sure you can see it by the way he's playing. Like I don't, I don't think he's. Even with the players, whenever they were playing against Atlas, I didn't see Josh Wolf, uh, you know, like getting mad or being like a brat. Nah, he was completely different, like, you know, calmado. He felt like a very professional guy for his age. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very I mean, professional. I mean, and, and, and we're hoping that uh, his dad give, gives him a chance, you know, mm -hmm. in a real game. You know, like like we said, we these we're friendlies, and he's putting it to play so we can kind of see what he can bring to the team. Mm -hmm. um, I hope I hope to see him in uh, in one of these season games, and and and, and he can show us because you you know these he's a young kid. He, right. he he wants to show right now what he got, mm -hmm. and uh, I feel like if uh, he does give him the opportunity, we're gonna see uh, 
a good player in the making in future games. What do you guys think of uh, Kleinman, the other defender that was in second half? Uh, mm. Honestly, I, I I thought he 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 had a performance that um, was solid, but I can't really tell you. I don't think he's he's a starter. Right. I think he's definitely a backup. Mm -hmm. But I just got to go back and. What, what, what I was most impressed about the game was definitely Kip Keller. Kip Keller? Kip Keller looks solid back there. Kip Keller and <laughs> I would say Valencia. Valencia. Valencia, like man. Valencia. He he would go. Did you see uh, all the like, way to the back? Yeah, I saw that. He, he would like, he was there, like, hold the ball. Yeah. Make that turn. Como un, un defensa que agarra la pelota de, 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 de un contención. Uh -huh. La recibe de espaldas. And he makes that turn. And he looks for the pass. Or he, you know, he... Doesn't do more than he needs to, but he does enough that what he, you know, he has to do. Yeah, and, and, and he's just joining the team. He's just trying to, he's just getting to understand the mm -hmm. system. It can only get better, you would hope. Right, so, right. The Cincinnati FC game, uh, Saturday at five o'clock, man, we, that, that is a must win. It has to Yeah, be. they have to. Yeah, right. it has to be. We, we have we, to start strong. We would not be happy with a draw right. or a loss, obviously, but... It needs to be a win in my in my eyes. Um, another thing that that I want to uh, mention is like the forwards. We know we had Hussein and and Digite. Um and that, that's the one that I'm a bit concerned. Uh, like against Atlas, Iriti didn't start. Um, but I think if if we don't have you know like say we have three players, you know the. They have to score, you know, so you can get that confidence. Cause yeah, for sure. Like, did you think like he didn't have one shot at goal mm -hmm. against Atlas, man? And uh, I mean, we we were hoping. I mean, he didn't get a lot of balls either, so it, it was tough. I, mm -hmm. I understand that, but it's like, man, we we have to get more. Sh we, we have to kick. We have to be knocking at the door so we can score. You know, mm -hmm. if we don't do that, it's gonna be pretty tough to actually win a game. For mm -hmm. sure, you know, el partido se gana con goles. Y si no hay, ni, si no tratamos de tirar, si no tratamos de, de hacerlo con lo poquito que hay, si no tratamos de hacer lo más que podemos, el equipo va, va a ser igual que la, que la temporada pasada, y lo, es lo cual lo, lo que queremos que no pase, ¿no? Mm -hmm. And Hosen, after coming back from, you know, a, an injury and being out for a while, he, he's, you can tell he's trying. Like he wants to earn a spot. Now, He's gonna need a lot more, you know, than just trying. I think he's in a hot seat right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. To me, he's a mystery player. I don't know. I don't know what he has to offer. I just mm -hmm. know that they're putting a lot of trust in him for him to be wearing the number nine. Right. Um, and I, I didn't even realize how big he was until I saw him <laughs> in, front, in the field. I was like, this, this is a big dude too. Like, he's tall, dude. I want to yeah. see him like win some headers, you know, yeah. body some people up and. Uh, I think uh, the game against Atlas left uh, more to be desired, of course. Para un delantero, los goles son vida. Like, es claro. That, pues, yeah. Es lo que te da vida. Sí. Y cuando un delantero no, no mete goles, he's, he's dead on the Se inside. Yeah. He's dead on the inside. So yeah. hopefully these guys start scoring soon. And Man, I don't know. What are your projections for uh, Cincinnati FC? A ver, marcador, ¿cómo va a quedar? 2-1 Atlas FC. 2-0. 2-0. Yo digo 2-1 porque... Al menos de que, de que si empieza Romaña, man, I got a feeling like they already know where the weak spot is. <laughs> and I mean, all respect to Romaña. Ya vieron el juego. He, he kinda, he's kind of like Richie playing defense. <laughs> Damn. Damn, man. Con que les pegue la saque con eso tiene. Nah, man. I, I'm hoping for a 3-1. 3-1? Get that, get that stadium vibrating. Vibrant. You know, yeah. South End, the whole stadium to be que se like electric. Los electric. Yeah. It was your first time at the supporter section. That's right. On, yeah. Uh, against Atlas, I've right? been to like se seven or eight FC yeah. games. This is my first time in the in supporter Ooh. section. And I, let me tell you, I'm, I'm never going to sit anywhere else. Man. <laughs> <laughs> I already told my wife, I'm like, we were doing it all wrong last season. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I, I had a great time singing, uh -huh. singing uh, all the songs, um, jumping up and down, like getting the showers. You know what I mean? <laughs> like the, it just felt like a totally different environment. And uh, I don't know, man, it just feels like you're, you're, Estás motivando a los jugadores yeah. más. Sí. Estás enchufada más al juego. Uh, Como que todo, la, todo el grupo de personas ahí te da energía y sí. esa energía se la transferimos a los jugadores para Exacto. que más. Exacto. You don't have to worry about like 
do you have to stay at stand down, sit up? Like you stay sitting yeah, up the whole time. You even forget. Day, you even baby. forget that you're standing, bro. Se, when se you're pasa yeah. el tiempo así. Yeah. Se pasa el tiempo así. Yeah. Uh, but nah, dude. I can't wait for the game, dude. But man, we got a lot of soccer to talk about, man. Right now, I got the I got oh, the PSG. Shoot. I got the PSG. The champions. The champions. We got, we're about to hop on the jet away. <laughs> <laughs> man, I would I would tell you what. Here's I I got respect for Madrid and for PSG, but to have the quality of players each team has and to have a game that was 1-0, uh, it is like who was not risking, who risked them like the least? It is like it well, was it was so 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 it, it was about strategy i would say but like estaba trabado but, like, but no let me let me tell you this look psg had him dude psg, uh -huh. PSG was always attacking so basically real madrid didn't have nothing dude they couldn't uh -huh. they didn't have a shot on goal the whole game dude so it's like that's how much that's how different PSG PSG is against, it's, it's against Real Madrid. Well, you know? let me say this: uh, in, in the Champions, mm -hmm. the rules have changed. There's right. no longer the, 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 the visiting goal, goal. Yes. la ventaja de, of that visiting goal. Mm -hmm. um, so, I think, in my opinion, it makes it makes the visiting team more defensive. They don't have that reason to uh, go out there and score. If mm -hmm. anything, they have a reason to hold and wait for that second leg yeah. at and, their house. And that's how Ancelotti likes to play. So, yeah, that, so, that, so that, it makes true. a lot of sense, you know. But but in a like in a way, like Richie was saying, you can't really respect a a, a Real Madrid with all these stars, all these players, and then go on, going and doing something like Atletico de Madrid is doing. You know, that's their game. That's Atletico Madrid. Game. Right. Wait right. and then wait for a, a counter attack so they can score. Which that's that's usually how Madrid is playing now. Like say in like even when when Ronaldo was there, um, you can always know there was gonna be a goal at least. Whether you win or lose that game, there is going to be a goal or there's going to be a chance where, you know, it can be a penalty, it can be whatever, but chances are going to be created because that's how much intensity he will bring in. But it just felt like, for me, as man, you can't hold back when you're playing Champions League. That, that's, for me, that's what I think. Like, if you're, if for me, the top, you know, five teams Real Madrid and Barcelona sorry Real Madrid and PSG they're in that f top five right now in the world for for a 1-0 game then that was it just like I don't know like I, I feel like hopefully in the Bernabeu things are different I'm yeah. just happy I'm really happy that PSG at least scored man because I feel bad because Messi meets a penalty kick yeah um, because that was it right there but um, the thing is once they I was thinking once they, somebody scores a goal, it's going to open up yeah. and there's going to be more goals. Mm -hmm. But the pro one was that the goal came like at the last, oh, the last minute, minute yeah. so we couldn't see anymore. You know? Mbappe, but, Mbappe, Mbappe to save the day. Oh. Mbappe, the goal. One question that I have regarding like Messi missing, missing a penalty kick uh, is Messi. I mean, I'm a Messi fan. David is a Messi fan. You're a Messi fan, Koke. No, I don't oh. think so. I mean, what? <laughs> no, no, I job, but I, I, I do have a preference to Messi. Yeah. It's Messi just Ronaldo. like, 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 uh, like Messi, like, wait, if you don't want, like, say, if you're gonna, like, for me, is, uh, yes, you can be analytical, you can be, you know, not until you actually shoot, that's when, you know, that's when that play is gonna happen. But, Sigo es penal con, como, sin ganas. Like, he was, yes, I know he's a very introvert person, and that's fine. But it's like, uh, wait, para que, es, para que? But, but let, okay, let me tell you something yeah. about it. All right. Look, yeah, he missed it. He missed the penalty. But he had a really ass freaking good game, dude. Right, right. right. Yeah. He, he, he didn't score a goal, man, but he was, he was working, dude. He was doing his stuff, uh -huh. giving passes, moving. Like, man, I don't know, I don't know. I guess we got so used to him scoring all these goals, doing all this stuff, mm -hmm. that whenever he does really good on a game and he doesn't score, it's a bad game for him. You yeah, know? yeah. People, people like Messi, people like Ronaldo, they have the bar to mm -hmm. the top. Whenever they're not the heroes of their team, yeah, they they had a bad game. They're going to mm -hmm. be criticized, and in this one in particular. Messi did everything yes. except score. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And yeah. PSG did everything <laughs> except, except score, score till the very, very end. Mm -hmm. So it, 
it's it's tough to look at and and uh even recently at the in in the uh game was it yesterday against uh Nats? oh yeah right okay nantes nantes yeah, yeah. They had struggles up top, dude. They they actually were shocked by the way Nats was playing. Nats, Nantes looked uh, more dangerous in right. Real Madrid, man. They came out yeah, fighting. Yeah, they came out fighting. <laughs> but then, and then the, like that's where like where I'm going is okay. It's there's something internal that's going on in the, in the locker because okay, you're creating, you're not scoring. You know, Messi missed a penalty. Neymar you won the game. Yes, Neymar yeah. comes in like that you was, know he's that was coming a back worse, from injury. That was the worst penalty I've ever yeah. seen. And, yeah, and then was. like for the caliber of players that PSG has, three zero against Nantes. Three one. Three one. Yeah. Okay. I mean, Neymar uh, scored a goal. He scored, scored a, a goal. really good goal. That's good. You but but it's, 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 it's like like like, like from that it, it's it's um. Do you guys feel like they have enough to win the Champions League with Messi in there? Not playing like that. If, if they don't have the, the contundencia que necesitan to win games, they're not going to win it. But they do have the talent. Dude. They have the, the talent. They've always had the talent. Yeah. It's, it, it, it's, a men, it's a mental, yeah, like, it's spir a mental spiritual mm -hmm. block. Yeah. And honestly, I think uh, the, the more I've been uh, kind of reading and, and listening to different opinions on it, I think uh, Paris as a whole, uh, PSG has an, has an internal issue as well. Mm -hmm. But... With the afición, the afición yeah. feels mm -hmm. like this team is not theirs. It feels like there's like a disconnect between uh, the people managing this team, yeah, uh, and and what the goals really are. So, so the argument that that I've been hearing is that PSG is a team that has formed to to be successful commercially, mm -hmm. to sell camisetas, to sell mm -hmm. uh, merchandise. If you look at any young follower of, of soccer, of, mm -hmm. of football, most likely you will see him with PSG gear. Why? Because they have Messi, Neymar, mm -hmm. Mbappe. And because they have, believe it or not, the Jordan logo does a lot for the, for oh, the youth. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Is it been there? Is it been there? And that's what the, the afición is feeling, that mm -hmm. this, uh, this organization just cares about uh, selling mm -hmm. and their goal is not necessarily to win the Champions League, but it's just to be there. Mm -hmm. um, and, it, and, and it sucks to think about that because you would think with a player, con un cuadro como ellos, that they can, they can win it all if, if the things started clicking. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a little bit sad to look at. I actually, I thought the last Champions League, they looked a lot more dangerous. They did. They, yeah. had, they had a lot more chemistry. The yeah. one touches that we're doing yeah. with Di Maria. Yeah. So I don't know, man. It, it, it's it's a it's an interesting subject, mm -hmm. and, and and Paris is a is an incredible incredible city, and um, I've even heard that uh, players from Paris, especially if they're uh, like minorities, like mm -hmm. of African descent, you know what I mean? They have more success to go play somewhere else and then maybe get picked up later. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's kind of what happened to Mbappe. I know Mbappe yeah, is from the from, from the Paris area, but yeah. you moved Monaco. to Monaco mm -hmm. uh, to play. So I don't know if that has to do with some of the their uh, internal issues, but man, it's it's an interesting thing to look so at. So how how is like internal issue, right? You're saying like managers and players, like they're a man merchandise, you know, selling team, which is fine. I mean, money you gotta make money, you know. Yeah, right. Right. But pero, pero like how how is that like? But para decirte sinceramente lo que pienso yo que es el problema ahorita es uh -huh. el coaching staff. De este Pochettino. Ese Pochettino no está haciendo la, las cosas bien. Uh -huh. En primer lugar, está poniendo un cuadro que lo está, se siente como que lo está poniendo al azar, güey. Pone, claro, los de arriba los quieres poner siempre, ¿no? Mbappé, Messi, Neymar. En el medio siempre, ¿verdad? ¿Verdad? Y hace, un, hace partidos, güey. Uf. Increí un, un jugador increíble. Uh -huh. Pero atrás en la, de, en la defensa, ahí es donde, donde está fallando mucho. Mira, Marquinhos es un buen def defensa central, lo cual uh -huh. siempre... Siempre está ahí para defender y hasta para meter goles. Pero el problema es que no tienen salida. Para, para, para llegar a la pelota a Messi, Neymar y Mbappé cuesta mucho. Ese proceso entre los medios de, de pasar la media y dárselo uh -huh. a los delanteros les cuesta mucho al PSG. Y yo creo que ahí es donde le está faltando. El momento que ellos encuentren una forma de hacer que la pelota se mueva mucho más rápido para que le llegue a los tres de arriba, vamos a ver muchos más goles. Usualmente Messi tiene que llegar hasta la media para agarrar. Lo que estaba haciendo en el, el Barcelona al final de temporada, no sé si se acuerdan, sí. que llegaba hasta atrás, agarra el, le está pasando el PSG, llega hasta atrás 
ya cuando llega a, a tres cuartos de cancha, pues ya llega bien cansado. Es más difícil dar una pelota buena, una pelota para gol. Y no es lo que lo estoy cubriendo porque se le ve también a, a Neymar, se le ve a, a otros jugadores. Simplemente lo que estoy diciendo es que no hay transición entre el medio y defensa para los delanteros. En el momento que haya ese, uh -huh. ese, ese movimiento de pelota rápido, vamos a ver goles y, y rápido. Pero ¿por qué los cabrones que... Si sí, Berratti es el único que está haciendo todo, sí. ¿por qué los otros dos cabrones que están al lado de él, por qué no le ayudan? ¿Sabes por qué? Porque a él le da, agarran la pelota y lo primero que hacen es dársela a Berratti. No crean ellos, sino no. Berratti, tú eres el creador, ten, güey, hazlo tú. Who's, a, who's playing in the midfield with Berratti? Uh, es este... No me acuerdo el nombre, este... ¿Cómo se llama este canijo? Pero a veces está Paredes, güey, y a veces está... ¿Paredes? Uh -huh. no, pero, güey. Uh, that... Pero, pero... O sea, son, son cosas... Y, y Di María de vez en cuando en el otro sí. lado, güey. O sea, y, y sabes que Di María es un correlón, ¿no? Y hace tu, sus jugadas y es un, un, un jugador que puede hacer cosas independientemente, uh -huh. ¿no? Pero a veces este, él entra de cambio muchas de las veces, ¿me entiendes? Y entonces, este, yo creo que Pochettino tiene que ver mucho con el problema que está pasando PSG ahorita. We have a... Uh, Wijnaldum. Like... Oh, Wijnaldum. Oh, where's mira, Wijnaldum? Como mira, el juego de ayer, Wijnaldum... Perdido, yeah. perdido, porque no les ayuda, no les ayuda ni les quita. Pero, pero es como si un jugador menos tuviera el PSG porque no, no le aporta nada al equipo. Y, y fue, lo cambiaron ayer, pero ya al final del tiempo. Uh -huh. y, pero dices, ¿hasta qué momento le das chance? ¿Me entiendes? ¿Hasta qué momento el, el coach tiene que comprender que no, que no le está funcionando la estrategia que le dio o la, la posición que le dio al jugador? Uh -huh. Para que, para que se vea, porque el jugador no sirve para nada y, y yo creo que un jugador como la calidad de él <ríe> debería de, de, de enseñarse un poquito más, ¿no? Yeah. What a... Now, let's, let's go back to La Liga. Um, Barcelona es... It's, I mean, we have, they have one more, one game less. Xavi time. And I mean, they're, they're 13, 14 points away from, from Real Madrid. I like that. Shall be time. They're, get, they're getting hot, man. They're getting yeah, hot. Abu Young is actually doing a lot better than I expected. He f he's finally at a proper club. Yeah. yeah. Or a proper Arsenal. club. What, what is that? Yeah. Ask, Ernie, ask that question to Ernie, Alfie, and Raj. Never heard of him. No. Never heard of him. No, I've heard of my boys, but. Um, man, yeah. I, was, uh, I, didn't, I didn't get to watch the game yes, uh, yesterday. Today. today. Well, not yeah today. Yeah. Um, but it was man just to see that you know um, to see them win at Valencia. Yeah. This is a, this is a game they really needed. It was yeah. they, were, they were visiting Valencia in el in el in el Mestalla. Mm -hmm. um, un equipo que siempre les da batalla. Like every now and then sí, they're pretty good. Son mm -hmm. partidos muy buenos siempre contra el Valencia. Yeah, and and mm -hmm. this season in particular, they they face them. I think they're in like uh, the tenth place, somewhere mid, middle, middle middle of the bracket. Middle of the bracket. And uh, Barcelona is getting hot at, at the right time. You know, they're they're fighting for that uh, that top four spot. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know that we watched this game. <laughs> yeah, I watched it. Um, I just want to say that. Estos partidos son bien engañosos, son bien engañosos porque, yeah. como tú dijiste, es, es un, estamos jugando a, a un equipo de, de mitad de tabla, de un equipo que sí quiere pelear, pero no es a los que tenemos que, no es a los que tenemos que decir que son equipos fuertes. Cada equipo tiene sus diferencias, claro. No, no, no estoy quitándole nada al Valencia porque el Valencia es un gran equipo. Uh -huh. Simplemente que estos partidos son los que tenemos que ganar, claro. Pero también uh -huh. quiero ver un partido ganándole al Madrid, ganándole a, al Sevilla, ganándole a los de arriba, ¿me entiendes? O ganándole en, al Napoli en, la, en ah, Europa. Correctamente. Sí. Eh, lo que vi en este partido fue simple, contundencia. La hubo mucho. Uh -huh. La hubo para el Barça, la, estaban ahí colocados siempre. Uh -huh. Hasta Pedri metió un golazo, men, de, un tiro, golazo. de tiro. Y, y este, lo cual es, como te digo, cuando, cuando un, un jugador entra enchufado, todo le sale bien, ¿no? Y Pedro entró de cambio y entró enchufado y entró a los cinco minutos, mete su gol de tiro. Uh -huh. Y golazo, ¿no? Uh, pero yo lo que vi del juego, porque el, el Barcelona viene, viene jugando con, de una forma muy bien. Sí juega muy bien, pero sí. no hay goles. Porque los otros partidos que hemos ganado, si lo hemos ganado es de un gol o uh -huh. hemos perdido de un gol, ¿me entiendes? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Pero el mismo concepto, la misma forma de jugar viene siendo. Lo, que, lo cual está bien porque Xavi lo está haciendo ese, esos partidos, ¿no? Uh -huh. Se mira lo mismo. 
pero la contundencia sí estuvo. Cuatro goles en, creo, creo que en 15, en 15 minutos ya estaba ganando 3-0 el, el, el Barcelona. O sea que... Ya. Yeah. Cuando hay contundencia, man, es, es, se mira un, 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 un equipo diferente. No, lo que me gustó de este juego es que todos, todos estaban jugando Mira, su parte. Sí. Un golazo, golazo de, de Pedri, de, Pedri, uh -huh. de Abomeyang, Abomeyang yeah. Frankie de Jong. Pero Pedri había entrado apenas cuando, cuando sí, metió sí, el gol. Entró cinco o seis minutos que, sí. que estaba que Eran de cuatro. No, es Pero no. fueron cuatro jugadores diferentes que, sí. que terminaron anotando. Eso le da mucha confianza a un equipo joven y, y a los jóvenes... Cuando, cuando tienen confianza, es, es lo más importante. Para, hey, wey, para... Estamos arriba del Atlético, ¿eh? Sí, y tenemos un partido mismos, menos. Sí, tenemos los mismos puntos, pero tenemos un partido menos. Por eso digo, güey. Sí. Game in hand, baby. Um, Game in hand. And then we have now, now uh, another subject that I really, uh, I try to keep up, man, but it's hard keeping up with a lot of stuff. Is uh, the Premier. La Ooh, Premier League. The ay, Premier ay, League. Ay, ay. The el Premier League. Cuéntanos, cuéntanos, okay, well, oh, what's okay, so what's I, I woke up this morning, so excited, <laughs> 8 a.m., baby, let's go. Made my little steak and eggs. Actually, my, my wife made steak and eggs. Thank you, thank you, babe. Um, they played Leeds, un equipo de fighting relegation, very at the bottom. This mm -hmm. game should be an easy, winnable game for Man United. Pero sabemos que en, el, en, en the Premier League, Nothing is promised, especially right. against a team fighting for their life like Leeds. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I love about English soccer is that it's scrappy. It's back and forth. Mm -hmm. if we, it, it was a night like that. It was raining. They were, they were playing at Leeds. Mm -hmm. um, and th it started off amazing. They were, they were winning 2-0. Mm -hmm. It looked like, okay, get game in the bag. Leeds comes back. <laughs> In the second like half, right back to back, no. In the matter of two, like two or three minutes, yeah. I literally went to go take <laughs> shit, and I came back, and they were tied. Yeah, and I felt like this is United. This is Man United. This is the <laughs> team that I'm gonna love and is gonna hurt me, and we're in a toxic relationship. Tiene mucho problema. Es la tóxica. ¿Cuál es más tóxica, Man U or Jenny Sixty Nine? Shit, I think they're up there, dude. <laughs> But no, nah, it was a, it was an entertaining game, and uh, yeah. Harry Maguire scored a goal with his big fat head. Um, <laughs> finally, he really he really needed that. Uh, <laughs> Bog, no, Paul Pogba was doing some magician shit. Um, Pogba, como, como, tiene tiene esa técnica, tiene ese estilo mm -hmm. que a veces le falta corazón en el equipo. He needs a little bit more heart in the team, but yeah. that's oh, all right, man. Right now, the the person that's most impressed me is uh, is Sancho. Mm -hmm. Sancho's, if yeah. you look at his stats. The way he's winning back the ball, winning one on ones, mm -hmm. um, creating assists and opportunities. He's number one in his team. Mm -hmm. Yep. And the guy that, that, of course, we got to speak about, but that I don't really like to speak about <laughs> is Ronaldo. <laughs> Ronaldo, his homecoming hasn't been um, as great as anybody as he thought it would be. I, yeah. I think we all saw that this was probably not a good move for him, but um, <laughs> man, he's been struggling. Up Ronaldo. There. He's been struggling up there. And, he, he, and, and it's like the players, um, they don't even pass him the ball that much anymore, man. Yeah. He makes his runs and sometimes he's asking for it, but like, it's almost like they've lost a little bit of that confidence in him. But it's helped the team because they 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 moved the ball to to, to Linger. They moved the ball to uh, their other forwards, their other midfielders. So uh -huh. I'm okay with it, man. I'm okay with it. And at the end, I think... Um, Los cambios que hizo uh, 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 Ragnich were amazing. Like he put in Elanga and he put in Fred. He, Fred. They're yeah. the ones who ended up winning the game for him, dude. Mm -hmm. So Fred's score, right? Yeah, props, yeah. props to them. You know, the, I think this was a, a an important game for for Man U, who is similar to Barcelona in a <laughs> position where they're fighting for that top four spot, yep. for that European spot. Mm -hmm. um, so. This is a result we needed to win. We needed to grab. And I mean, just from looking at the table, I mean, they're, uh, yeah, Man City is on top, but you have Liverpool with one game less and they're, you know, 59 <laughs> points. Dude, no, nah, that, that table's on fire. Dude. That table's on fire. And actually, that game, dude, that game, Man City Tottenham. Yeah. Dude, I don't know if y'all saw I it. I was watching that game and I was pissed because I'm a Man City fan. Of course, Pep. And, you're a Man City yeah. fan. Yeah, Pep. <laughs> And dude, like I, don't, I, I couldn't believe what had happened, dude. They, they tied the game mm -hmm. and freaking <laughs> Harry Kane out of nowhere, dude. After like two minutes, he comes and scores. The hey, win. well, Harry Kane, he was, he was a uh, link to Man City, right? And it yeah. didn't happen. Mm -hmm. If you, uh, 
if you can't join them, beat them, right? Yeah, yeah man. That's what they y were saying. Y se los chingó. <laughs> <laughs> no, en serio, pinche Harry Kane. <laughs> los metió tres goles. I look at Harry Kane, and if I would see him walking on the street, I'd be like, ah, oh, this guy's like a normal dude. <laughs> He's got the English haircut, you know. He looks like a regular dude, probably at Hop Squad drinking a beer right now. <laughs> <laughs> but you see him and, and part, los, part of Los Verdes he looks like a Wayne Rooney <laughs> los goles que mete <laughs> las corridas que hace los pases eh, eh, his connection with uh, with Son yeah <laughs> come on Son yeah. when they want to when they want to play when things are coming out the, man, the Mexican Korean <laughs> hey yeah we'll never forget you Son <laughs> eres Mexicano whatever you are King no Son Son eres Mexicano dude Um, son, hermano, eh, eres eh, mexicano. There you go, there you go. Eso, eso es más mexicano que saludoreño, eh. Sí, eh. No, a ti te están mirando tus mismos cantos. A mí ya se me saluda todo, eh. Yeah. <laughs> right. Dude, um, no, actually, like, on last Tuesday, I, was it Tuesday or Thursday? Tuesday, mm. I was at home, and my wife was like, hey, I'm going to go to the office, and I'm going to go to, um, I forgot where else she went. And they're like, cool, I'll be here and at the house. And I'm like trying to be a good chicken dad. I let my chickens out. And they stayed out like overnight. <laughs> uh, I forgot to close the gate. Mm -hmm. And then on Wednesday morning, I hear that like, Ricardo! Mm -hmm. Like, oh, yeah. Like, did you leave the chickens out or not? And they were like, and I went like this, like, oh, yeah, my bad. Like, I heard it like, you know. The raccoon could have ate it. And I was like, yeah, you're right. I feel like, I feel like, you know, I feel like shit. So I was like, dang. A so, Richie, a Richie, les están pasando cosas de abuelito. Así que no se preocupen. For real, dude. Richie, yeah. uh, you and I are similar in the fact that we forget a lot of things, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But honestly, I, I've been doing some reading and, and like, I think it has to do with sleep. Oh, for real? For real. For If, if you if you don't get enough sleep that yeah. seven to eight hours it, that that time is for your brain to get rid of all the junk uh -huh. and like re literally regenerate itself and be ready to to uh, remember things and, and capture new ideas but I get it for 14 hours though but <laughs> the, it, yeah, it's, right. it's, it's, it's not about length it's yeah. about uh, regularity yeah. keeping the same time you go to bed it's the same time you wake up but we all know that with everything that you're doing yeah. that we're all doing, It's, that's impossible so yeah. it's kind of one of those things where it's like you know what's good for you and you know what you need to do but at the same time you, gotta, you gotta get things done and yeah. I understand you man yeah yeah I think I think that's what's going on like I forget a lot of things I'm like oh crap I forgot that <laughs> but yeah no luckily like nothing happened to the chickens which is good uh, so we got machine you know out there just in case you know man I, I you'd be surprised know. the chickens chickens are Man, they're, they're little dinosaurs, bro. Like, most of the times they'll take care of themselves, but, you know, yeah. we know how it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, but other than that, I know uh, last week was very eventful. Um, our boy, David Blue, you know, he released hey. the Texas Chainsaw Massacre on, well, it was on Netflix, out on Netflix on Friday, February 18th. Nice. Yeah. Uh, we got to go to a screening, and it was pretty cool. Uh, we missed you, okay? But yeah, dude. Tell me, good. tell me about that experience. What that was like, the screening, dude. dude so, like always, I was with Javi. <laughs> and before I was, thinking, I was, thinking I was uh, doing some stuff with Javi, and then I, I go to the to the screening, and they showed the first, like the original one from 1972, I think. They showed it first, and then they had some of the people that worked in that film there. Yeah, it was pretty. And cool. Blue was, you know, with them. Yeah. Sorry. And then es el chilaquil de ayer. And and then um they did a in between the movies, it was like about a good 15 minute uh break. They did a QA. And guess who's the who was the, the person that like guided the QA? Guess. Just guess. Just guess. I mean I I, I kind of cheated. I I saw uh, a picture, so I know uh, I know it was Matt. Matt Maddie. Ma My Our man Matt. Matt. Yeah. Hey, shout out to Matt for hooking it up for, for the sits and all that, man. Appreciate you, man. Yeah, he's in us. Uh, hey, man, I got your ticket. Like, oh, man, thank yeah. you. Appreciate it. Uh, so, yeah, um, we, we got to hang out with Blue before each movie. And then Maddie did the Q&A, which was pretty cool because 
they I mean they picked Maddie and Maddie is a big you know movie fanatic so yeah he is um Man, he did very good, dude. Like, he did. He did. Really if I told him, dude, if you start your, your your podcast, I'll record it for you. Just give me the, you know, come in with your content and talk and bring your people, and I'll, I'll take care of the technical part. Right. He voice sounds exactly the way he talks. You know, on yeah. Mic. Like, yeah. For for those of y'all who don't know, uh, Matt and 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 David Blue, yeah. uh, the director, we our our connection is all through through soccer through uh pick up soccer mm -hmm. and uh through anarchist soccer mm -hmm. so that's kind of how we all met and that's awesome that you guys uh you guys were there i feel uh i feel happy that you were there kind of sad that i missed it but yeah. um i got to watch the movie with my wife nice. on friday uh friday night we made a little bit of a uh, homemade ramen Ooh, i uh, saw that we uh, got some steak from HEB, you know, to add a little little meat kick. I left mm. it nice and bloody because I know we were going to watch uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That way, the way you're supposed to be the steak, bloody. Yeah. yeah, just a little bit of blood, and you know what I mean? The yeah. blood and, is um, a taste. The movie was amazing. It, it was so entertaining, dude. Like, yeah. me and my wife were, were, were at some points, like, just screaming our screaming our faces <laughs> off. And, uh, <laughs> you know, we, we were watching it at our, at our house, yeah. just me and her at night. So... I, I, I got to try to continue to scare her throughout the night because we were already both creeped out <laughs> and uh, we were looking at the backyard to make sure that everything was closed and man dude it was scary I think I think what I most love about the movie is mm -hmm. uh, is how they connected it to present times but in a way that it wasn't like this big lecture of like uh, of uh, I guess you can say woke like that woke uh, lecture where yeah. it's like trying to tell you how to live your life it, it kind of made fun of that a little bit and uh, kept the core elements of, uh, of uh, Leatherface and it, the, the way they, they made the, the way, like we were talking about it earlier today, just, the, just what he was doing with this chainsaw, mm -hmm. dude. It was so creative. I'm like, damn, well, how many things can you do with the chainsaw? <laughs> he gave us I more like, ideas. I like that chainsaw dance, man. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that was a pasita, I don't know, like, dude, it was, it, it was like in the first movie when you've seen it and he's running around with it. He looks like, you know, he's doing the el, el tucanazo. <laughs> <laughs> With the chance of Yeah, man. That's and, awesome. and that's pretty cool. It was, I was happy. Um, and then, like, another thing that's going to happen, our, our friend um, Javi, um, he's going to finish the documentary where a lot of people were part of. Hey. He interviewed a good amount of um, people from La Murga, you know, different, anyone that was part of the first season. Javichi. Um, and that's going to be premiered this coming uh thursday february 25th 20 24th at uh the pitch from seven to nine so so you guys get, get a chance to go check it out go check it out and then they're gonna do another showing on friday before the game at a uh, murga city limits oscar brewery oscar blues so yeah there we go, oscar, oscar blues so um it's a it's a pretty busy week week man there's a lot of good things coming up, man. Shout out to Javi and everybody who's been working on this on this on this uh, incredible documentary. I can't yeah. wait to watch it. Uh, hey, I got, I got credits. Uh, my name is hey, on the poster. Richie, one of a, one of our hey, own, man. Yeah, Richie, I, was like, nah, I know I know you've been putting in that hard work, and uh, like like we were talking about earlier, uh, the Texas Chainsaw movie. You can find that on Netflix for sure. For uh, sure, you can stream it on Netflix yeah. anytime. Go check it out. Go, go check it out. Go really check it out. And and support it, man, because. Like for us, it's, it's local talent. These right. are these are people from your community, like uh, people that you probably played soccer with him exactly. at Tilker. Right now, exactly. it's a number one movie in Netflix, so. trending number one. Yeah, Hopefully, stays up there for a long time, man. Uh huh. If you see a guy with long hair running, like you know, like he's about to go thousand miles an hour, crush someone, running like Jesus. There we go. That's uh, David Blue. I'm just glad he doesn't have the chainsaw because he would catch you really quickly. <laughs> nah, man, but just that, <laughs> just that body, like that's Manuel. <laughs> <laughs> I guess like one of the scenes in the movie it was like you know he imagined I remember like what happened to Manuel and he's like alright this is it <laughs> <laughs> Manuel shout out <laughs> nah man that's yeah. exciting well I can't wait man I can't wait for the start of the season watching this documentary yeah man and uh, one one last thing I wanted to plug is uh, tomorrow I'm gonna go uh, donate blood at We Are Blood okay We Are Blood I'm wearing the shirt let's uh, go live here give here Mm -hmm. Dude, you you came in like repping that we are blood and your new uh, Manu kicks. Damn. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. My, my wife got me some uh, custom 
Man United uh, Nike Air, Nike Air Maxes, and uh, it's probably one of the most thoughtful gifts I've ever gotten. So thank I'm, you I'm actually gonna like take a, uh, a period of them right now. As you're talking, oh yeah, to you. I'll, t- I'll just take it off. <laughs> go for it. Take it off. Show me. Yeah, why not? Hey. Yeah, man. So pretty much. Uh, they had to pawn like somebody and <laughs> you know remember your favorite uh car it's, it's gone it's gone now 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 i'm gonna have to get an austin fc custom made there we kick. go i'm gonna have to get a barca custom made kick and why not and uh uh bailey fc yeah i should get that the <laughs> bailey the new, FC, there you go baby. and the hop squad F- fc nah, in otra, por favor. yeah you know what let's just do a bunch of a custom bunch of kicks. custom kicks. We're gonna have to just. We might have to sell our bodies a little bit. <laughs> well, I mean, if you look at it, if we do otro por favor, it's gonna be black and white, which black is all I wear. I mean, mainly black. Yeah, that's pretty much our <laughs> colors, bro. Black yeah. and white. That's that's straightforward, man. Nothing more, nothing less. Yes, sir. Maybe a denim shirt, but that's about it. Yeah. That's all you need. Um, but anyways, guys, uh, you know, I also want to say, like, you know, I appreciate everyone that reached out uh, for what happened. Uh, I, I, uh, my grandmother passed away on Friday. Well, Thursday. Um, I got the, the, the news after we went to the screening. So anyone that said hi and anyone that, you know, that has, you know, send their messages, I appreciate it. And, and yeah, man, I mean, you know, like she's in the bird of praise and, and, you know, it's our family is, you know, like for what she was going through, like they're more at peace right now than, than, when it happened, of course, it's sad, but uh, yeah, I didn't get to go, unfortunately. Um, but I think I think she knows we're making her proud. So yeah, and you know, this is another episode of Otra Por Favor. Otra Por Favor. Ay, cuídense, take care, and see you guys on Thursday, on Saturday. Si acuérdense, siempre síganos, estamos ahí siempre, las mismas, en las mismas plataformas. Acuérdense, darnos un like. Mándenos un DM, que no mordemos tampoco. Mándenos algo ahí para que le guste este contenido, que quieren que saquemos otra cosa. Díganos, díganos, díganos si estamos, uh, somos esas personas que nos gusta escuchar la opinión de otros y, y tratar la manera de, 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 de hacerlo acá. Tenemos este, este espacio y tratamos la manera de hacer lo mejor que podamos. Y gracias, gracias por escucharnos. Adiós.